Hi, everyone. Today, I'm joined by Martin Bruce and Yen Shafe, both executives within the IBM MEA Flash Systems team. I was intrigued by the benefit Flash Systems bring to small and medium-sized enterprises. So I asked Martin and Ian if they were happy to enlighten me on the subject. We will discuss how does IBM address cybersecurity for SME businesses? Why Flash Systems are important to protect the SME business today? What are the capabilities required to build a strong company in the digital age? what challenges those companies face. And finally, we will talk about the benefit of Flash Systems solutions. So good afternoon, everyone. Today I'm joined by Martin Bruce and Ian Che from IBM, both MEA executive within the Flash system within the IBM storage division. So thank you, Martin. Thank you, Ian, for being with me today. Yeah, pleasure. So I'm intrigued by the flash system, right? And maybe both of you know that a long time ago, I've worked at IBM when I was a bit younger. Uh, <laughs> anyhow, I would love for you both to introduce yourself. So I'll start with you, Martin. Uh, so Martin Bruce, so I head up uh, flash systems for EMEA for IBM. Uh, I've been at IBM uh, about 10 years, just over. Uh, and in what feels like a previous life now, I was actually a storage architect in financial services. So I've arrived from a, a very technical background, able to read fiber channel analyzer traces, um, but then all the way through to uh, uh, quite a, a sales and, and product focused role. But still having that, that background in the end user, uh, I'm really aware of how important, you know, reliability and security and, and many other things like performance are uh, when you choose a product. Thank you, Martin. Ian, who are you? <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm Ian Shave. Uh, I am the um, director for our distributed storage sales, or, which is, encompasses Flash System uh, worldwide. Um, but obviously, as you can probably pick up from my accent, i um, based actually in the UK. Um, so I've been in the IBM storage division for just over 20 years. I've actually been in the storage industry for over 25 years, but I think getting close to 30 years because obviously I started very young. Um, and But yeah, work, have worked, actually worked both in IBM, but even during that time, worked out with some of our business partners. Uh, so kind of have you know a real perspective on you know what it's like for them dealing with IBM uh, and some of obviously how... Um, you know, they need to go to market. Obviously, you know, we continue to work with them very closely all the time. So, so what do people should know about the storage division of IBM, Ian? Uh, that it's the best. I mean, what else is there to say? Um, no, so genuinely, we, we have an incredible breadth of capability. So unlike, you know, many other players in the market, you know, IBM does have a solution for many, many different problems. Uh, and it's not that we're saying we have a solution to many different problems because the one solution is a one size fits all. You know, we, we really have a great depth of capability. And so, you know, when we work closely with customers, uh, when we work closely with our partners, you know, we can absolutely sort of tune to the right solution that optimizes for the client, as I say, rather than sort of trying to make, you know, shoehorn something in to make something unnaturally fit, we really can design the right thing. And Martin, what has made you be within IBM and focus on storage and flash systems in particular? So, I mean, very similar to Ian, you know, my background has been in storage for a large number of years. Um, I remember looking at the, uh, uh, the original, uh, as it was called at the time, SVC code base, uh, back when it was in beta, when I was a customer looking at it under NDA. Uh, and uh, now, obviously, I, I run uh, that, uh, you know, the, the product that runs that code base across the whole of Amir. I'm not sure I ever knew the journey would lead me here. But, you know, as Ian says, it's fantastic working for a company that has that, you know, that uh, really strong pedigree that IBM does, you know, from the very largest customers, getting people to the moon, that kind of thing. Uh, you know, it's, it's, uh, it's nice to walk into a company where you're proud to see the logo above the door when you walk into the office, even though we don't go there a lot at the, uh, at the moment. Mm -hmm. uh, but also, you know, working with Flash Systems, it's been fantastic to have the whole portfolio and to have, uh, you know, solutions that start 
at an incredibly low price that people often wouldn't believe comes from IBM all the way up to the high-end enterprise. And I think having that breadth with a single product portfolio is probably something that no one else in the industry really has. So Ian, you're an expert in, in cyber. So how does IBM address cyber security issues for small and medium-sized enterprises? Well, kind of similar to what we were just talking about for storage, we, you know, I, IBM can do that in many different forms. Obviously we have an IBM security division which has some exceptional solutions. Obviously, under the banner, they you know they talk about it under the banner of zero trust. So they've got great software solutions for trying to stop the invasions, for detecting the invasions, and obviously the automation for okay. And how do you respond when these things happen? You know, so if you detect an attack, if if you detect someone has actually got in, and they're kind of almost in lies the the unfortunate situation for a lot of clients because whether it's IBM security software or security software from anybody else in the market, you know, they're not 100%. You know, you can't stop everything because there might be some low priority system that maybe didn't have the right security that, you know, these cyber attackers are being, you know, unfortunately very, very clever and they'll copy user credentials from people and, and they'll figure out ways to log in, albeit that it seems very secure. So what we then can bring from a storage perspective is if someone does get in, how do you recover? Because once they get in, they typically are going to corrupt data. They're going to cause as much disruption as possible. You know, ransomware obviously is a, is a big, big issue at the moment. We're unfortunately seeing that certainly weekly, not quite daily, but probably not far off. You know, high profile customers getting hacked. And again, even within the cyber piece, you know, in terms of cyber recovery, you know, there really are so many different aspects to that that we can help customers with, you know, because there is going to be things like looking at you know, encryption of data so that even if they do break in, can you can you stop them really accessing your data? Um, and if it's a ransomware attack, how can we help the customer recover quickly so they don't have to pay the ransom and they don't have to have big disruption to their business? But we also have the solutions that stretch all the way out to, you know, unfortunately, sometimes these things, they the way they, uh, you know, plant malware in the system, there have been cases where someone's had to recover from data that's months old. And again, you know, we can help from, you know, rapid recoveries, unlike, you know, unlike some of our competitors where recovery really is in the days and probably a couple, at least a couple of weeks. Industry average, by the way, for recovery of a cyber attack is three weeks, 23 days. Uh, and we're helping customers get that down to three hours. But we also have all the solutions as well, so that if you need really long-term data retention, because you do have to go back a long way, we have the solutions for that as well. So that is interesting because, as you said at the beginning of our chat, is that as we have moved to remote working and all of us are working from home, we need to be a little bit more careful that we our data, our customer data, and how we manage it, right, Ian? Yes, I, I mean, absolutely. But, and, and that's why, you know, there, there are so many different aspects to obviously the security side of things, even just from the storage side, because we are looking at, I mentioned obviously some things like encryption, looking at, you know, multi-factor authentication so that you can, you know, have the different security, you know, even separation of duties, all these things to try and help ensure you've got a methodology to mitigate the risk as much as you can. As I said, unfortunately, you're never going to stop it entirely. So then it really importantly, we've got the, how can we help you recover? How do we re help you recover really fast? Because, you know, you, you, you know if people talk about a, a cyber recovery solution, uh, and there are other vendors out there in the market, unfortunately for us, uh, there are other vendors out there and they've got cyber recovery solutions, but we've spoken to customers that have them. And then when they've been attacked, they've discovered it's still taken them. Uh, one customer in particular, I was talking to a large financial, took them 11 days to recover, even with a cyber security solution. And, and of course, we could have helped them recover in hours, um, you know, and that's that's a big, you, you imagine the cost impact. There was a, you know, uh, another sort of very large uh, supermarket chain that actually unfortunately got disrupted um, uh, two, three weeks ago. Their systems, you know, online ordering systems were down for four or five days. And this was, you know, in the groceries, you know, space, not a lot of loyalty in groceries. So guess what? Everybody moved and bought their groceries from somewhere else. And I know, Martin, you saw quite hilarious one of the consequences of that hacking as well. Hell yes, 250, Yeah, 250 cans of uh, 
a diet soda, I think, turned yeah, out in someone's house. Yes, indeed. So. Well, well done. I'd have probably said the brand name, so I'm glad, I'm glad <laughs> you said that. So. Yes, that, that would have been, not, certainly wouldn't have been a healthy diet for that particular, that poor customer. But but yeah, so the, the, the impacts are very, very real. It's the, it's the loss of business if you're down for several days. But in, in that case in point, it's the reputational damage because with social media, every time these incidents happen, it's all over social media you know, in a flash. Uh, you know, like Martin said, when there's a certain soda, which I <laughs> that someone suddenly gets delivered a lot of, you know, which is really not good for your health. So, Martin, we are able to reduce the time of recovery for small and medium sized businesses, enable them not to lose too much money, because I gather some of the players you have mentioned have lost quite a lot of money with the situation they were in. So, you know, when you look at a small business, it's all about relationships. So what makes your team special? What makes the flash system division really caring for its customers and uh, existing and new ones? Uh, so I think that's one of the things that's, that's probably different in the way that we approach that area of the market is that a lot of the functionality that we're delivering to people and taking to the market at a price point that other people aren't, has come from the high end. Um, you know, so when we talk about our cyber resiliency features, uh, our cyber vault has come from our high end DS8000 running for, you know, mainframes, which are running in most of the banks around the world. And every time someone uses their credit card, it's touching numerous of our systems uh, every time. Uh, and so I think that different approach in the fact that we are taking true enterprise functionality and bringing it to people and making it accessible, easy, very simple to use. Um, you know, I mean, I think when we talk about, Ian was talking about the quick recovery there and, you know, a matter of minutes or hours, the simple fact is that it takes a few mouse clicks to do what other people you'd be referring to the documentation and going to different products. This is a few clicks in the GUI and you can have your system up and running, you know, for, for, for smaller businesses that may have people that are, you know, doing multiple roles where, you know, the, the reality of being down for hours and losing customers could be the difference. You know, a big customer company can survive uh, a small company. You know, that could be the difference between make make or break um, success and failure. Uh, and so I think, you know, the thing that for me is when we're approaching these customers to bring that enterprise functionality and make it accessible. Um, and also, you know, in addressing this market, um, we very much realize that, you know, a lot of people um, maybe don't realize that IBM is still in and successful in the storage market space. And even if they do, they probably don't think that we've got solutions that are accessible, easy uh, and, and simple for, for them. Uh, and so, you know, one of the things that we've worked on is actually um, developing uh, an online portal um, where customers can actually go to check out our solutions. We don't put the high end stuff on there. Um, we have up to our high end mid range. Um, but really, you know, if, if customers are interested in our cyber resiliency solutions, they can go there, have a look and see that, you know, for 25 terabytes, it starts at around just under 30K GB pounds uh, or around 33K euros for 25 terabytes of really high performance flash storage. And I think, you know, and that is with the cyber resiliency features all in and, uh, and working. Um, so I think it is really exciting to be talking to, an area of the market with a real bridgehead product that probably, you know, people don't realize that this is possible at this price point for them uh, not to get something back that quickly. I think, Martin, that, that's something we've seen it, it, as such a change over the last, you know, several years that we've been in this industry. Because I can remember, you know, it used to be that buying entry meant compromising on capability. You know, I, I can remember that, you know, entry systems of several years ago. I mean, they were really dumb storage systems. I mean, you, you didn't get any fancy bells and whistles with them at all. And obviously, exactly, Martin, as you were just alluding, now we're going all the enterprise you know, capabilities that people thought were the reserve of the really high end, very expensive systems. You know, we're bringing them right down into the, you know, sort of the, the entry space, exactly, you know, Martin was alluding to. So that they're, they're affordable for everyone. We're not, this is now not to, to be cyber resilient. You have to be big. You have to have deep pockets. We're making this very, very affordable to ensure everyone can have, you know, the right storage system for their production environments, you know, to run at the performance they need for the efficiencies they need, but with cybersecurity as well. 
Yeah, Martin, as you know, I work with a lot of small businesses, a lot of startups. So tech ventures, startup, scale up, grown up. Can you show me, can you tell me, can you demonstrate to me how practically you help a small business, please? So I think, you know, a lot of the way in which we um, focus and address small businesses and startups uh, is through our channel ecosystem partners. Um, and, you know, IBM invests an awful lot of effort around them, making sure that they're fully skilled up. Obviously, they have that, you know, really great relationship with their clients. Um, and IBM are there to make sure that they've got the tools, the skills um, to deliver solutions really successfully to our clients. You know, we have we have direct teams as well, you know, that, that work for IBM. But very much, I think, you know, if, if people are building a relationship with IBM, uh, you know, when they're a startup or a, a small medium enterprise, they're going to be talking through our business partners. But IBM is always there in the background working with them. So anything else, Ian? I think Martin really covered it very well. I mean, it, it, yes, the, our, our partner ecosystem, but that's not to say, I think as Martin said, you know, IBM has never shied away from wanting to support its customers, wanting to support its business partners. We are absolutely there. And in fact, you know, we've, we've been improving our, you know, support of systems to make that process simpler, to, you know, and to offer kind of more options that, you know, therefore allow the customer to get to the service level that they really need. Um, so they can be using the business partners, but they're always, you know, very safely backed uh, by the IBM support infrastructure as well. Yeah, I think I think just elaborating on that. When I when I think back to my days as a as a customer, uh, you know, logging calls over the phone and, and <laughs> things like that. What's your site ID? The reality is now that every flash system comes with software that runs in the cloud that will monitor the box. And if there's a problem, it logs a call with IBM itself, uh, uploads the logs, and does everything itself. So you know, for for a small medium enterprise. That is fantastic. You know, the first they might know of a drive having failed is when one turns up ready for them to install. And, you know, that that's the way that we want this to be. It should be a seamless experience and people should be able to manage these systems easily. So do, do I mean, do the capability change if you work with an e-commerce company, an healthcare company, a finance company, an insurance company, an insure tech, fintech, health tech? Are they things those businesses need to know that IBM can help them with? In terms of the requirements of those companies, certainly with regards to, to storage, um, you know, they may have different security requirements. They may have different recovery requirements in terms of bringing their business back up. Um, but very much, I think one of the key things is that, you know, the functionality that we offer is completely standard. Everything is the same between our uh, entry level flash system 5200 and our uh, enterprise flash system 9200. You know, it's a consistent suite of software and functionality. It's dependent on the size of the business and the industry. They need to uh, decide what performance uh, they need. You know, all of these solutions are going to provide them availability because I don't think between industries that doesn't really vary. Everyone needs their storage to be on all the time and available now. Uh, and I think as the press, you know, shows, Every industry is exposed to the same security concerns, whether now that the, you know, they're indiscriminate. It can be a hospital today. It can be a supermarket tomorrow. It can be a financial services, someone who provides downstream services to other clients, uh, you know, the next day. Uh, and I think, you know, in the news today, I think was the fact that insurers are looking to down and reduce their cover for cyber incidents. And I think that's going to make companies think again, because they've had that that security blanket there. And if your insurance company is suddenly not willing to uh, to cover these incidents in terms of losses and ransoms to the same extent, then I think, you know, regardless of your industry, you have to really start thinking about how you get your business back on its feet if the worst happens. Yeah. You're absolutely right, Martin. I was having a call earlier with uh, some cybersecurity uh, startups, actually, and over the week uh, with insurers. So capacity is shrinking. Uh, price of insurance is going to increase uh, because with remote working, we have actually had few more issues. And so therefore being able to surround ourselves with the strong, secure environment, digital environment is going to be very important for any business out there. Yep, absolutely. So you already 
started talking about some of the benefits, right? If I work remotely, if I want to get my business back on track in hours rather than days, I should be thinking IBM. If I want uh, a system which is priced for me based on the volume of data I'm using, I should be thinking IBM. What other benefits should I be able to, to get access to if I were going to choose IBM Flash system for my cybersecurity needs? Well, I think, you know, really that obviously when it comes to cybersecurity, the, the fundamental thing is the rapid recovery. It's well, and we focus on the recovery. That's the true value of what we deliver. The, the important thing is we can take, we can create these immutable copies of data. So within the system, we create immutable copies of data. If anybody's not familiar, it means we can take copies of data that cannot be changed after they have been created. The problem we have been seeing, and unfortunately, we've spoken to clients that have you know, been attacked, and the first thing they targeted in the client was their backups. So they removed the ability for the client to actually be able to recover. So it's really important in what we're delivering, we create these immutable copies. So they're copies of data that cannot be changed, cannot be deleted. Obviously, eventually they're deletable, but you set a policy up front. You set a policy up front, when are they going to expire? Once that policy has been created, you can't then just go and delete them because obviously that's the last thing you need is someone saying, oh, it can't change, but I can delete them. So copies of data that can't be changed can't be deleted. So you know you've got a copy to go back to. A really important step that we are also delivering as part of, we, we refer to as Cyber Vault, which is building on top of the capability in Flash system, using this ability to create uh, immutable copies. It then is the whole process of how do you recover? Um, and, and how we make that simple, how we automate as much of that as possible, because it's crucial uh, when doing a recovery that you test the copy before you restore. Because I said, you're going to take a copy of data and that, and although it hasn't changed, if you discover afterwards that are obviously that you'd been attacked or the corruption was already there when the copy was taken, the last thing you want to do is recover that back into your production environment. So our cyber vault process is all about that end-to-end -end process of take the immutable copy. You know, how do I detect, how do I get early detection that I've been attacked so that I then know what to do next? Because the earlier you detect that you've been attacked, you minimize obviously the, the damage that can be done. You limit the number of systems that can actually be impacted. That's going to help you recover faster. Uh, you know, and it's that kind of that entire cycle. And for those customers that you know want the kind of end-to-end -end solution from IBM. There is some fabulous integration between our uh, IBM security products, you know, QRadar with our flash system products. You know, obviously QRadar has already got some great abilities for detecting invasion from a storage perspective. Um, our storage insight software that comes with every flash system, as Martin said, you know, cloud-based, that can also help alert where, you know, if you were if you're getting compression on data and suddenly you're not getting compression, hey, that's a real early warning sign someone's just encrypted your data. So there's great integration, additional ways we can detect. If we detect, help detect you know, the attack faster, ultimately that's all going to lead to doing a recovery faster with a tested, validated copy back into production. That's why we talk about it as being hours, if I'm honest, as to recovery. The reality is, if I want to play kind of silly games here, the reality is I could recover you in seconds to, you know, to minutes. You know, if, if you just want to go click, recover that copy, it happens super fast. What we recommend is go through the right steps, recover, you know, a, a, a copy into a safe, isolated environment, test it, validate it, ensure there is no infection on it. Once you found the right copy that is clean, then recover. And I think that's that whole cycle that is so important. And I think is, our, you know, is a great value add that IBM sort of brings through its business partners. Martin. If I were going to use Flash system within my business, who does your team need to talk to within my team tomorrow? So I think it's, it's you know, obviously there's the obvious, you know, people who are managing storage, but very much, you know, more now we find that either they are going off to speak to their security team internally, um, or else the security team themselves are getting involved because, you know, obviously in, in companies of all sizes, there are people that are concerned about security, intrusion there are people that are concerned about risk uh, and so i think one of the things that's the unique about this is that while storage is a kind of niche 
area that that people are you know sometimes rather would just sit there and work and and not have to deal with this really is making it incredibly relevant for anyone uh within the it area who is is concerned about data the resilience of that and you know the worst happening and i think that's one of the you know the really interesting things about this is it makes storage very relevant for a lot of people within within a company because you know there are you know when these things happen it is you know it's a huge business impact event if suddenly your customer database gets encrypted or uh your customer data gets leaked on the web or uh you know you are down for so long that your cash flow is completely disrupted um and with more and more people obviously you know accessing services in companies of all types online um i think it becomes a lot more relevant and i think you know from surveys that have been done it's pretty much you know cyber security is kind of the number one concern uh, and very much you know the pandemic has only i think helped to accelerate that because as you say you know remote working it's so much easier for people to use phishing or spear phishing attacks when you're not sitting in an office so absolutely and one point you are highlighted today cyber security and cyber risk is the number one emerging risk across the globe so both martin and ian you're absolutely right. The additional point, which I think is very important to stress, is you are bringing what you are offering large companies for small companies, enabling them to improve processing speed. Uh, you mentioned improve resiliency at a cost which is affordable and putting them back into business in minutes so that they continue to serve their, their customer, reducing the risk of reputational risk. Absolutely. Is there anything else you want to add to our viewers and listeners? Well, I, th I think the, you, you know, because it might initially for some people seem maybe a little intimidating. How do I know what I need? How do I know where my gaps are? So again, you know, whether with, with I, you know, directly with IBM or obviously through our business partners, you know, for any customer that we have a cyber, a, a cyber resiliency assessment, um, that can even go a step further with our IBM security team. We can do what they call a zero trust assessment. So if customers want help to understand where are their gap, you know, weaknesses, where are the, the gaps that need filling, we can help with identifying that. And as I said, kind of at the beginning, the, the great thing is what we can come back with is, you know, a, a, a deep sort of analysis of, hey, these are the steps, these are the things that can help you. And we're not approaching it with, right, I've got one thing, so that how do I convince them this one thing is going to fit all the problems I've found? You know, and we're going to be saying, we, here are the areas, these areas are fine. These areas are going to need this solution. These areas are going to need this other solution. So, but we can help very importantly with identifying what are the, the gaps, what are the areas that they need to address to become more cyber resilient. They don't have to have worked it all out for themselves. We can help them through that process, as I said, from you know, identifying it to providing the right solution for it. Martin, any last few words? No, I think, you know, it's uh, Ian's covered it quite well there. I think, you know, the cybersecurity assessment is a really good place for people to start. Um, you know, talk talk to their business partner, check out the storage digital platform, because I think uh, when people look at the portal, they will be pleasantly surprised at the, you know, the functionality and the, the IBM brings at the price point. But I think, you know, the fact that we have this single family, all these features available for customers of all sizes means that, you know, the results of that cyber security uh, assessment won't be some scary seven figure sum. It will be something that can suit the size uh, and you know budget appetites of, of any business, depending on what your business does uh, and what appetites it's got. And I think that is, you know, as I say, I think it's the really core thing. Um, the fact that you know all data on a flash system can be encrypted, so you're protected against you know while your office is remote, somebody can't just go in and take your drives, for example, if there's no one in there. Um, and that happens with no performance loss. Uh, and a feature of our, our flash core modules. There's some, you know, there's some amazing functionality that's built into these products. And, you know, I think that this real core functionality that we've built around the, the cyber vault and cyber resiliency um, will, I think, uh, bring flash systems, you know, really up in relevancy to a, a lot more customers of all sizes. Martin, Ian. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you for enabling us to discover IBM flash systems and storage division. Pleasure. Thank you, sir.